I'm going to share with you a little bit about my testimony and how I met the Lord Jesus. Um, after my mother died, um, I was forcefully taken out of school by the white farmer that my grandfather worked for. I had great dreams. I wanted to be a lawyer or a traffic officer. And, um, and one morning he just stopped by our house and he took me out of school. And, and I was forced to go and work on the farm as a slave labor for one rand a month uh, until one morning, about Sunday evening at 12, I was lying in bed and I thought to myself, is this all that life has for me? And that morning, I decided to run away. I wanted to have freedom, more life and experience. And I ended up living on the street. At the age of 18 years old, the doctors told me that I was addicted to drugs, that um, I will have to die using drugs, and there was no hope. And that's how I lived my life. Uh, when my own family would even go to church, they would look to the other side because I was just living lost completely on the streets, smelling, stinking, dirt, until one day my aunt stopped by and she looked at me and she says, uh, Wilson, I will give you three weeks. And if you don't change your life in three weeks' time, I will then have to ask you to leave my house. I was so happy that I was able to, to have a roof over my head and, and, and provided this place to stay for three weeks. But the truth is, I couldn't help myself because I was addicted to drugs. And yet I took this opportunity and I went and stayed to my aunt. And, and I remember it was the last Sunday when she came from, from uh, church. And I heard it was, she was singing as she came from church. And, and I thought to myself, she will walk into my room and come and, and preach at me. And then lo and behold, she did. She walked into my room and I was lying on the bed and she, she looked at me and she says, Look at you. If you die today, you don't even belong to a church. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you die, who's going to bury you? And she wasn't really concerned about my soul. But God uses that. And I asked her, what must I do? And she says, well, why don't you come with me to church next Sunday? Well, I was too happy because I could stay another week with her in the house. And, and I remember she gave me a blazer. The next Sunday I went to church with her. She made me sit in front. And I remember it was the first time that I ever uh, um, went to church and my first prayer in church. And, and I said, Lord, please let the pastor finish because I, I just wanted to get out and, and go and use drugs. But afterwards, when he finished, um, the pastor said, all those who want to be part of um, uh, and become a member of the church, they need to come together in the corner. And I knew I was one of them. There was about 14 of us. And so I was pushing everybody away because I just wanted to come to the front. And I thought, it's so easy. You just give your name and, and, and where you stay, and then you are a member, and then they're going to bury you. Well, I was surprised when uh, this lady that was standing there and taking all our names, her name was Auntie Sheila, she says, no, 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 Wilson. It's not working like this. For the next two years, we're going to study the life of Jesus. And I could almost hurt myself swearing at her. I mean, I wasn't ready to study for two years in the church, the life of Jesus. But I, I sort of just stood there with all the others. And as I walk out of the church, I will never forget it. I said to myself, I will not come back. Until that Wednesday, I heard this voice. And it's just all the time ringing in me, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And I've been staying for a month with my aunt and she never talked about Jesus. But then I remember and Sheila talked about we're going to study Jesus for the next two years, a confirmation classes. So I went to my aunt and I said, can I go with you again to church? And she was so happy. She told all the neighbors, now Wilson is, is coming to church. But I had a question. I, I wanted to find out about this name. So I went to church the next day, the next Sunday, and she made me sit in, in front again. And I had my second prayer by now. You probably know what it is. Uh, Lord, just make him stop uh, preaching because I wanted to go out and use my drugs. And then afterwards, we had one hour where all the new confirmation members would come together and study. And I went there, not that I wanted to, but I had a question for Auntie Sheila. And so after our hour of studying, uh, I stayed behind and all the people left and I, and I asked Auntie Sheila, I said, Auntie Sheila, and I was very serious, I said, can you help me? Where can I meet Jesus? And she looked at me without saying a word, she turned her back and walked out. And I was really serious, I wanted to meet Jesus. And I remember as she walked out there, I stood in the church and I still remember the simple prayer I prayed. 
I said, Lord, if you really say who you are, if you don't come today and reveal yourself to me, if I walk out here, at least I can say I've given you a chance. And sometimes we have to be very careful what we ask the Lord. And I was not even finished praying this prayer when it appears that the roof of this church split in two and lightning struck me down. And I was lying for two hours on the floor. And after two hours, I woke up and I went outside. And I was amazed. It was like I was walking on this, on this beautiful cloud. I saw all these white images. I heard people were calling my name. It was the most beautiful I've ever heard my name called. And I saw all these white images. And normally from our church to my aunt's house, it would take 10 minutes. But this day it took me an hour just as I was looking around and just hearing these beautiful uh, voices. I remember that morning when I went to church, I was still under the influence of drugs. But then uh, when I came back this afternoon, as I walked into the house, my aunt looked at me and she says, what happened with you? You have changed. And she was right. Something happened with me. I, I couldn't explain to her what happened, but I knew something happened in the church. And I remember I asked her to give me coffee. And, I, and, and as I was drinking the coffee, I began to have this intense desire just to study the word of the Lord. And I remember I, I took this Bible that Auntie Sheila gave me at the, the, the confirmation classes and I began to read it. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I got to this portion where it talks about in Acts, um, and I think you know the story on the road of Damascus, where this voice was calling to Saul and lightning struck him down. And then he heard this voice talking to him. And as I read that, it was like a veil that God was lifted up. And then I realized I had an encounter just like Paul with the living God. It was the same lightning that struck Paul down on the road of Damascus that, that struck me down in the church. And all of a sudden I realized that I've never touched drugs up to this day. God has set me completely free. What the doctor says that I will have to die using drugs, God has just proved completely wrong. And today I'm sitting here and I'm so grateful for what God has been doing in my life. And all of a sudden, I just begin to develop this desire to go out on the open, having open airs, preaching on the streets, and just seeing the power of God and how God has used me in, in, in praying for people in a wheelchair and, and they got healed. And, and I remember this one lady that came and called me about 12 o'clock at night. I said, Wilson, um, my mother said, you must come and pray for my aunt. And as I walked in there, this lady, the doctor has only given her three days to live and she couldn't speak. As I walked in, I could almost smell, you know, the demonic forces uh, uh, in the house. And, and I stood there and I prayed for a half an hour and nothing happened. And I remember that evening I went back home and this was the early beginnings of my convers conversion. I walked back and I was so disappointed because I had so great faith that God would heal her. And I heard God say to me as I walked back home, He said, I've just asked you to pray for her, but I will heal her when I will heal her. And that was the first lesson I learned as I, you know, begin to preach that, you know, sometimes God's timing is not our timing. And when He heals her, and three o'clock that morning, while I was in bed, the children came and called me and said, you must come and see. And as I arrived there, God had healed this lady while I was not there. And it was the first beginning with my walk with Jesus, as I realized that, you know, when you trust God, that all things is possible.